Well, if you have visions of just walking out along the Jurassic coast, fossil hunting, finding a calcite ammonite like this one, Asterosaurus obtusum, the king of calcite ammonites, just walking along picking it up like this, you're sadly mistaken, that very seldom happens. And that would be a mistake to have that vision in your mind. You're just gonna walk along and get that. You have to pick the right little rocks, the small stones that split like slate, the layered rocks to find these ones in. Well, today we're looking at 10 fossil hunting mistakes. You can see it's a real fair weather day, probably the hottest day in the summer. And there is a lot of sand being swept in up to the mid beach area. Well, I've just spotted a cracking little piece of uh, limestone rock, the layered natured rock that splits like slate. And these are the important little pieces of rock the layered rocks where you look for small detailed signs like the attrition of the sand and sea eroding that the piece of that little ammonite you can see protruding out more of the nice layered nature to the rock and look there look you can see two ammonites that have been ground down by the attrition of the sand and sea it's a worn piece but that'll be really nice for breaking and i'll show you that later on in the video how i get the little ammonites the calcite ones like i showed you earlier you must look for the right rocks to get those particular ammonites. Well, certain rocks have the right signs on them and certain rocks have the wrong signs. When you're looking out to sea for fossil finds, it's best to have shoes with really good grips so that they hold the weedy areas well that are slippery. A real mistake along the Jurassic coast is not to have the tide table times with you and know when the low tide is. The best time to come fossil collecting is an hour before low tide and an hour after. And that's when the sea's done the work for you, washing along the areas of rock and hopefully washing some fossils out of mudslides onto the beaches. And you have more beach to look at when it is low tide. The one thing you'll notice during the summer months is people coming down with stupidly big hammers trying to hit rocks and just hit random rocks on the beach. And these don't break with any fossil finds in. You have to know the right little rocks, the layered natured rocks. You're best to go on a fossil walk, a guided fossil walk to learn what to look for. And this is a hammer made of wood so I'm not actually doing any damage and I suggest to you to get one of the smaller nicely weighted little hickory handled hammers a pair of safety spectacles there's plenty of one-eyed geologists along the areas where there are flint rocks flint rocks tend to fly and that's not good for your eye well, one thing you see an awful lot of during the summer months is people just picking up random rocks, not knowing what they are, not knowing if there's even a fossil contained in them, and just hurling them at other rocks to try and break them. You won't find a fossil like that. Even if you do, it'll probably damage it anyway. So why not learn what the right rocks are, the little rocks that split like slate? Let's give this chunk of water-worn woodstone a tap with the cleave end of this little geological hammer. Sharp sounding noise you get with these right splitting rocks. They split like slate and I can see there's a little bit of a crack there and there already that one's already been eroded off the edge but look there's a lovely little ammonite preserved in calcite and a smaller one next to it there from this water-worn piece of limestone rock. Well, here you go, the grand reveal. Look at the little small calcite ammonite that's popped right out of the rock. And then one contained in the rock with the impression one side and the whole ammonite the other side. Nice creamy brown ammonite there from the Jurassic age. Amazing to see them in these water-worn pieces of rock on the beach. 
Well, another piece of the limestone layered rock, only a small piece of it found out to sea here. And you can see the impression one side of the ammonite and then coming into the sunlight, a beautiful calcite ammonite that I've just tapped out of the rock. Well, some good little finds there out of that one piece of stone. That's all I've found today. But uh, when I come out here, one good thing is to wrap up the fossils with a bit of bubble wrap. And a mistake is to not wrap up the fossils because when they're grinding against each other in a bag, or if you put them in the back of a car, in the boot of a car and travel home, and they're next to other rocks, they'll grind away. And you don't want that when you've really nicely spotted some fossils and brought them back that are pretty perfect, best to bag them up. When you're sieving for fossils, there's different potting sieves, some with larger holes here than others. And this little potting sieve doesn't seem to get through the material so well because of the size hole. So a bit of a mistake to have two smaller holes in your sieve or two larger holes obviously when the bigger material will stay in the sieve but the small ammonites maybe may drop through the sieve there's at least a belemnite in here but you can still tell that the rest of it is not well sieved yet whereas this little potting sieve here you can see as i dunk it in immediately melts away all the material with the bigger sieve pot. There's an ammonite, one preserved in the fool's gold, iron pyrite. That's what we're primarily searching in with this iron pyrite. It's heavy, the ammonites preserved in pyrite are heavy, and they all congregate in certain pockets on the beach where the sea scours out these heavy pockets and you can find the little perfect ammonites in those pockets. Well, on a sunny day like this, it's certainly a mistake not to pack a good hat that cuts out glare. You don't want that in your eyes when you're looking for fossils and concentrating on the ground. The best tools are your eyes looking for fossils along the Jurassic coast at low tide. Another mistake along the Jurassic coast is to get too near the dangerous cliffs. They're liable to fall suddenly and without warning, especially in this dry weather, you can see out there in the distance, a very, very hot day, and the cliffs are drying and they'll crumble and they'll fall, and you must not be near the dangerous cliffs. They are very, very liable to fall after all this very hot weather. So here are the Blue Lias Cliffs. You can see those vertical cliffs. They crash down onto the shoreline, especially during the winter months, and then the sea wets them and the rain gets into them and liquefies them at times. Here I'm on hard baked lias mud as I walk along the slip and I find a piece of bone, a piece of hollow bone. And you can see that when I tap it against another rock, you can hear it's hollow. So it's not an ichthyosaur bone or a plesiosaur bone. A bit further out to sea, you can see this very liquefied mud. And as I pass over it, you can see people's footsteps in the liquefied mud where they've gone in a bit. Mary Anning, the famous fossil lady of Lyme Regis, designed shoes that were like ski shoes almost. She had these metal and wooden contraptions that went over her shoes that got her over the liquefied mud. If you'd like to go fossil collecting, why not get a guide and go out on a fossil walk? That's a good way of learning about the fossils.